Hi. Um, we did this written activity in class this week uh, based on uh, module 1.2 or the first part of module 1.2 um, and it provided such valuable points of discussion in terms of how to answer a theory paper and what will be acceptable answers in the final um, exam and that kind of thing that I thought it worth to actually take the time to do a video recording in English even though I teach it in Afrikaans school. So, um, if you'd like to do the written activity first, um, I've attached the PDF to this video, or there's a link to the video, a link to the file, so please do that first. See what you actually um, would have answered, so please do that, um, and then uh, continue watching the rest of the video, because then you can actually see what you would have answered. It's always better to learn from your own mistakes rather than seeing the answer right from the start. Okay, so let me discuss the answers now. So um, I will show you the answers and then let's go through them. So 2.5 and 2.10 are straightforward answers. Oh, and by the way, these questions all, all come from past papers, uh, past theory papers from CAT. Okay, so 2.5, which one is not a considered part of the general information processing cycle on all computers? That's obvious, it's B. Okay, so usually it's input processing, output and storage. So it's not analysis, it's processing. So B was the answer. And 2.10, um, the answer was A. Uh, RSI refers to an injury that can occur from the continuous use of an input device, such as a keyboard. By the way, B, O, M, R stands for optical mark recognition, and that was removed from the curriculum, so you don't need to know that anymore. Right. 3.9, the fact that it is numbered 3.9 and it's not a true or false question shows you that it's from a very old paper, um, but I still thought to include it because it's a good question to show you how to answer a specific question like this in terms of using the right words. Okay, so state the two main advantages of using a barcode scanner to enter large amounts of data. So, number one, it will be faster or easier than manual methods. So if you just said faster or easier, you would not have gotten your marks. The same goes for more accurate. You would not have gotten your mark. Either one of those two, either faster, easier, or more accurate, had to have the further explanation to say than manual methods or than typing it by hand. So if you had put your first bullet as um, it would, uh, it's more accurate than typing it by hand, then the second bullet could have been, it's also, therefore it's also faster, and then you would have gotten your two marks. Um, but you have to actually show the insight that why are you saying it's faster and more accurate? Because you write, that, you guys write that for every single answer. You're not going to get your marks if you don't explain why. All right. Um, and a better way to actually say more accurate is actually to say there won't be human error or there won't be typing errors. Okay, 4.1. State two disadvantages of wireless keyboards. Now, I don't agree with all the answers, and I'll show you why. Or I don't think all the answers will necessarily still be accepted in the latest papers that you'll still get in CAT today. Right, number one, batteries run flat or that you'll have to continuously buy batteries. That's all correct. But number two, limited range, I disagree with. And I don't think they'll always include that kind of answer. And I'll explain to you why. Now, if I have a regular keyboard, that's a wired keyboard, this has limited range. Okay. So even though a wireless keyboard also has limited range, a wireless keyboard has a far longer range than what a wire, wired keyboard actually has. So what you've actually done by saying limited range is you've turned the advantage into a disadvantage because it's actually an advantage that you can use it further than a wired keyboard. So you can't then go and turn that into a disadvantage. It's the same as if a question asks, what is the disadvantage of a laptop? And you say the disadvantage is the fact that it can run flat and then you, it, so it runs on batteries so it can run flat. That is the advantage 
considering the opposite alternative. If you consider the opposite alternative of a um, desktop computer, they, it always has to be plugged in and it always needs power because there is no battery power alternative. So you can't use the fact that a laptop sometimes needs to be plugged in and can possibly run out of battery as a disadvantage because it's actually its advantage. Okay, so in general, that kind of switching of a product or, or an item's unique advantage into its disadvantage is generally not considered a good answer and is definitely not the safest answer because it probably won't be included into the memo. Okay, it's prone to interference or crosstalk. That actually happens um, where a device can suddenly, suddenly start talking to um, another wireless receiver. That's actually happened to my husband. Um, it's more expensive than wired keyboards, that's true. If the transceiver is damaged or lost, so that's the wireless receiver, so you can call it a transceiver or the wireless receiver or whatever, um, if that's damaged, lost or stolen, then the keyboard has to be replaced. Now, that's completely true. That's actually happened to me with a wireless mouse. Um, the, actually, the wireless receiver was broken and then I had to throw away the whole mouse and it was a great mouse and I actually couldn't use it again. Um, the transceiver can also be easily damaged. Now, I see it says here, um, easily stolen. I don't think they're talking about the keyboard ha can be easily stolen. The Afrikaans one said easily stolen or lost. I think they mean the transceiver can be easily lost. Generally, in most memos, they don't want you to talk about the wireless devices that can be easily stolen because most wireless devices still use a wireless receiver as well, unless it's Bluetooth. Um, and actually going to the effort of stealing a wireless device plus its receiver is just as much effort as stealing a wire wired device. Okay, so for that reason, it's not a good answer. All right. Keyboard drivers only load once the operating system is loaded. What I assume that means, and I've never actually experienced this, but it's an interesting um, observation, is that if you're actually, if you go straight into the BIOS after starting up the computer, um, that's the um, program that can, that actually uh, controls which hard drive to boot from, that kind of thing, um, then you wouldn't be able to use the keyboard. I, I didn't know that, but apparently, Apparently that it works like that. Very technical answer. I didn't know that, but apparently it works like that. It can be intercepted or tapped into by hackers. Also a, a good, interesting um, thing. Latency during gaming, not as responsive as wired keyboard. Um, you can say that, but it's not as true anymore. That's more like five, six years ago. Now you can get um, uh, latency. Now latency is not that big an issue anymore. Now you just need to pay like a bag full of money for... Um, wired wireless devices that can actually be used for gaming that has a low latency, like in two grand for a keyboard. Very, very expensive. Okay, um, for uh, keyboards, we actually discussed one or two more things in class that was very interesting. Um, the first thing is, uh, the, the new thing that we discussed, is what if a keyboard types the wrong symbols? And that happens sometimes. And that's because a keyboard's layout can be one of two layouts. And in South Africa, the main, the, the layout that is used 99.9% .9 of the time, oh, sorry, is a US layout. So you'll see, I actually got a keyboard for free because it's a UK layout. So you'll see your keyboard actually has an at sign above the two, not a uh, double quotation marks and the double quotation marks is above the single quotation mark not the at sign and so this is actually a UK layout keyboard and that's why I got it for free <laughs> um, but the keyboards in South Africa that we use is actually the US layout so what that means is sometimes people actually set up their computer wrong because they think if we use the UK spelling, we use the UK layout, which is not true. We use the US layout. Um, and secondly, sometimes you can actually accidentally press the keyboard shortcut. Um, or I don't know what it is now. I think I'm going to include it in the video. I'll look it up. It's alt something. 
um, there's a shortcut that you can press that actually switches keyboard layout. So um, I had a teacher the other day calling me frantically saying, my keyboard is pressing the wrong symbols. And it was actually just the layout that he changed by accident. Okay, so um, that's got nothing to do with wired or wireless. It was just an interesting keyboard problem that we came across um, to discuss in class. Um, another thing is, let me quickly get a laptop to show you. This is a very old broken laptop, but you'll see here, um, there are small little numbers there, like there's a three by the L. Um, so those small little numbers can be activated by pressing the function button plus the num lock. Okay. So in laptops that doesn't have a numpad, it, there's actually like this imitation numpad where you can use some of the letters as a numpad. So if somebody actually accidentally switches that on, then their letters will start typing numbers and they'll also not know what's going on. And that's the reason why. Okay. So the next question was, an accounting clerk uses a keyboard that does not have a numeric keypad. Explain why a keyboard with a numeric keypad would be a better option. Now, one of the questions one of the learners asked me in class was, can they just say, because then he wouldn't have to buy a separate one, because I told them you can actually buy a standalone separate numpad that you plug in, like you can buy a, a standalone external um, DVD drive, you can actually buy a standalone external numpad. So she said, um, her answer was, so that he doesn't have to buy an external numpad. And my answer was no, that would not be acceptable because they say, why would a keyboard with a numeric keypad be a better option? And she's saying, so that he doesn't have to buy an external one. She makes it sound as if he has to have a numpad. And that's not true because you always have the numbers above the letters. Okay, so I disagree. That would definitely not be an acceptable answer because um, you always have the option of using the numbers on the keyboard itself. Okay, so there's two parts to the answer. The first one refers to the arrangement or the layout of the keys, and the second one is what is the result of the layout, the fact that it has greater accuracy or increased speed or better productivity. Um, so you could have said that in different ways. Someone said, um, would it have been correct if they said... Um, it's faster typing on that rather than the numbers above the rather than the long row of numbers above the key the, above the letters and that would possibly have gotten two marks because you are sort of referring to the layout um, but the one mark is specifically for the layout and the other one is what's the um, result of the layout so okay 4.4 suggest Suggest two ways to fix a mouse pointer that moves in an unpredictable way without replacing the mouse. Number one, reinstall the driver. Not install the driver, because if you had said install the driver, then the mouse would not have the mouse pointer would not have moved in an unpredictable way. It would not have moved at all. So that would not, not have been correct. Okay. Check the cable or the transceiver connection. So that, you would have probably said something like, check if it's still plugged in. That's fine. You can't just say, maybe it's plugged out. You should say, check that it's plugged in. Because they're not saying, what's the reason for the problem? They're saying, how should you fix it? Okay. Um, transceiver is the wireless receiver. Try another surface for the mouse. So, again, you can't just say, Maybe they're using it on glass. Then you're just saying what the problem is. You're not saying how to fix it. So you can say, try a mouse pad, or maybe try to use it on a different service, surface or something like that. Or don't use it. Don't use it. It's still a bit risky. Just try another surface. Restart the computer or the mouse. Restarting a mouse means switching a wireless mouse on and off. Because a wireless mouse, because it's battery powered, can actually be switched off. Um, adjusting the mouse pointer speed or settings. Now, did you know, if I actually go to mouse settings, I can select a pointer speed. 
So if the pointer speed is set to super slow, you can see I have to like move and move and move because it's slow. And if I set it to super fast, then I be yo, I'm like barely moving my hand. It's like way across the screen. Okay. So if I if I change if it's extremely fast or extremely slow, it could be unpredictable for the user because they didn't expect that. Okay. Um, try another USB port, possible. Clean or clean or clear any residue on the optical sensor. So, if you are using a mouse or you're back at school and you're using a mouse, lift up the mouse and actually feel the sensor at the bottom here. Put your finger in there and you'll see there's actually a hole in there. Um, if there are any, um, if there's dust in there or there are any little hairs or something in there, like my pet's hair or my cat's always lying on, on the table, then it, it's going to move in a very strange way and the cursor isn't going to move nicely. So you have to clean that. And then the battery on a wireless mouse you, can, you need to replace sometimes. Just pay attention that um, wireless devices that works um, on batteries, it won't just suddenly stop working completely. Generally, it will rather gradually stop working. So a keyboard will start typing a letter or two or a mouse will um the the cursor will start moving unpredictably or it will work a little bit and then it'll stop working and that kind of thing it won't just completely stop working forever like it'll yeah be like unpredictable okay now 4.10 explain how a point of sale device finds the price of a product after it is scanned okay now let me show you two parts to the question to the answer I know it's a difficult answer. No, most people don't get two points for this answer um, if you just think of what the answer is. But let me explain to you why. So the first part is they're just asking after it's scanned. What does it scan? Does it scan the shape of the bottle? No. It scans the barcode, right? Okay. By the way, this is the most amazing sanitizer on earth. It makes like a ton of sanitizer and it's safe to use in computer labs because it doesn't take the key numbers off and it actually is coronavirus safe so by the way all right that wasn't the point of this demonstration um, but it scans the barcode so that's the one point okay the product key product code or key or barcode one point one mark secondly what does it do with that barcode now that it's scanned it because remember once it scans the barcode it gets a number in return. It gets that little number in return. Um, it actually needs to look that barcode up on the database, not on the server. Lots of people just say on the server. Now, a database is usually stored on the server. That's correct. But the server is the location. The database is the type of file. Okay. So, or the, or the application that the file is stored in. So it's still, it's two different things. Server is the location, so that it's a centralized location, so that all the um, connected devices can actually read the database at the same point, but it is a database of all the product keys and its related information, like the number uh, of items that's in stock, or the description, or the price, or that kind of thing. All right. So... 4.13, you need to create an electronic copy of a printed document, but you do not have access to a scanner. Um, suggest one way to create an electronic copy of the document without using a scanner. Okay, so you could have taken a picture with a camera or with a smartphone or with a tablet. So you can't just say, take a picture. That's not good enough. You need to actually specify how. Fax to email, which is an odd solution because it would have looked terrible almost as bad as this, um, retype and save as an electronic copy. They actually accepted that. Now, how would you have known if you had to include the whole discussion about optical character recognition, OCR? Firstly, this only counts one mark. Secondly, if they had asked something like, you need to create an electronic copy of a printed document, which you then want to edit, or which you then want to be searchable, then you need to mention optical character recognition. OK, 
Okay, so if you want the document to be edited afterwards, or you need to be able to search the document afterwards, then you need to use optical character recognition. Right, name the principle or give the acronym that describes how human error or invalid data affects the quality and accuracy of input or of output, garbage in, garbage out. Um, if you're an Afrikaans learner listening to this, gemors in, gemors uit, but you can answer in Afrikaans or English. Okay, biometric devices will be installed at the different venues. Give, give two examples, give, <laughs> give two examples of biometric devices. Okay, so in English, you guys are lucky. You just get examples or advantages. Those are two very different words. Um, for the Afrikaans people, listen carefully. Um, in Afrikaans, you, the, the sentence would have been, Gee twee voorbeelde van biometrische toestelle. Um, but the opposite would have been, Gee twee voordele. Okay. And in Afrikaans, the learners tend to confuse those two terms so often. And that's not because you're bad at reading or because you're dyslexic or something like that. If you are, then that's completely understandable. But lots of times, anybody can make that mistake just because they're reading in a hurry. Okay. So if you see, as an Afrikaans learner, the word voordele or voorbeelde, please pay special attention and check which one it is because you guys get that word wrong so often. Okay, so two examples, voorbeelde, of biometric devices. So a fingerprint reader, not what is it reading, examples of the devices. So fingerprint itself wouldn't have been correct. The reader, fingerprint scanner is also fine. An iris or an eye or a retinal scanner or a camera is correct. Um, a microphone is correct because those are the devices, not what it's scanning. So you can include what it's scanning, the fact that it's facial recognition or voice recognition or iris recognition, but the crux of the matter is what are the devices that it's actually using. So the device that it's actually using are the ones listed there. Okay, so please pay special attention to that. And then lastly, you and your fellow cat learners will be helping your cat teacher to present classes for parents who would like to learn how to use spreadsheets or databases. The teacher wants to use QR codes, such as the one shown here, to share information with the parents about the course and the website that will be used for the course. Give two potential disadvantages of using QR codes in this context. So it's all about the fact that people don't know how to use a QR code, that's the first one, or that they don't have the right um, software to use it, or they actually need a device to scan it. It takes time to scan, so you'll have a whole line of people waiting to scan it. Um, I don't really know what they mean by that fourth one. It's probably got something to do with that it doesn't look as fancy. Um, and then the fifth one is an important one. Um, Pretty much any link can be attached to, attached if I call it that, but a, a QR code can lead to any link, all right? So people need to trust what you are leading them to. So some people that are extremely skeptical might not trust where you are leading them. It's basically like a stranger giving you a candy and saying, eat the candy, are you going to trust them? So that's what they're saying. All right, and speaking of QR codes, where is a QR code usually used? On a hard copy or a soft copy? Think about that. Why would you actually include a QR code on a soft copy? Would you not rather just put the link there and then the link, because you can just click on, click on the link, right? Okay, so a hard copy is the one that usually has a QR code, but it should always, because of this reason, how to use a QR code and the availability of a of the right app, it should always include below the QR code a shortened URL link. So you use a, a URL shortening service like Bitly to actually shorten the URL so that it's short enough that someone can just type it while they're standing in the queue or something like that. Right, the one thing that I just remembered that I didn't mention is this one. Okay, so 
That other um, student of mine asked why she couldn't just say um, that the numpad, that, so that he doesn't have to buy another numpad. You need to watch for what they're actually asking. So even though this question doesn't say that, what they're actually wanting is what are the advantages of a, of a numeric keypad. That's actually what they're asking for, even though it's not phrased that way. So you have to be very careful to see what they're actually asking for. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I'm trying to remember if there was something odd that somebody said that I can give you an example of, but I can't think of anything else. So I hope this helped. If I find another activity where there are lots of these examples, I will record that again. Okay, have a nice day.